Thank you for tuning in, this is Watch Eric. On this video, I'm gonna be going over a topic that I've had many requests over the last two years. But before we get into that, I wanna first thank all of my subscribers and everyone that's followed me along the way. And now let's go over my current watch collection. So watch collecting is all about acquiring new pieces and changing some along the way. Throughout that process, I have completely changed my collection over the last three to five years. It's been brutal. At one moment, I had the pieces that I thought I was set, then I ended up just wiping everything out and starting all over. There are a few pieces here that have always been there the entire time. But first, let's go over my Rolex sports models. So the first watch I wanna go with you is my Rolex Batman. And let me tell you something, I really like this watch. This is actually a watch that I bought um, right before the rise of the prices of these watches soared. I ended up purchasing this watch for $7,200. And at that moment, people were criticizing me, telling me that I paid too much. I bought it because I liked it. I had no idea that they were gonna rise. I use that watch a lot and I love it. Next is gonna be my Sub Ceramic Stainless Steel. Always a good watch to have. I actually just did a video on this watch. It's actually the last stainless steel Rolex piece that I acquired, and it just took me quite some time to get one at the right deal, and it's something that I really enjoy, so it's a great piece. If you notice in this box, there is two Kermit Rolexes. Interesting story about this watch, why I have two of them, and it does not bother me to have two of one watch. I'm just one of those guys. Um, long time ago, I did a really bad deal with one of these watches and I traded it for a deep sea and I hated it. You know, at first when that deep sea came out with that, you know, oh my God, it's like a super size sub. That time the trends were going bigger. After I had the watch for two months, I was like, what did I do? I can't believe I traded it. So it took me actually five years to finally get a good deal on a Kermit. And interesting enough, the first one that I bought was this one right here, which is an M serial bezel engraved. I got a really good deal on it. And I said, you know what? It's time to finally get that Kermit back because I felt like it was one of the ones that got away. But another thing about it is that then the second one popped up. It was a V serial. So I ended up calling one of my buddies, which we talk a lot about Rolexes. He's also a dealer. And I told him and I said, look, do you think that I should sell my M and keep the V? And he said, Eric, do you need the money? And I said, well, it's not a matter of need the money, it's just do I need to buy two of them? And he said, you know what? If you were smart, you would keep both. And I thought about that, and there they are. I actually have both now. Next, I'm gonna be showing you what's actually my first Rolex. This is the first Rolex I ever had, and it's a GMT Coca-Cola. It was actually gifted to me by my father and he got an incredible deal that I don't even want to discuss. Back then watches were a lot cheaper. So it's actually the most special watch that I have in my entire collection. It's the one that I would never ever sell. So if you can't tell, I'm kind of one of those that likes to pair watches up and have, you know, a couple of siblings for each piece. So once I had that Coke after many years passed, I said, you know, I've never had a Pepsi and I was always looking for one. So I ended up getting a good deal on this one. And uh, man, it's actually a cool looking watch. I like to have both. The only one that I'm missing would be the same one with the black espresso bezel. That would also be a good addition to my GMT lineup. Okay, keep this going. So my vintage GMT. Okay, this watch, it's actually pretty funny how this happened. Um, I used to have a white gold Pepsi, which that is such a long story that I don't even wanna get into it. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is I sold it and I moved on. And when I had done a review on that watch and did a collection update of just that model, I had mentioned 
because in that video I was driving my 1967 Chevelle that it would be really cool to get one of these watches in 1967. And sure enough, I put that out into the universe and somehow within a deal that I was doing for a Patek, this is the watch the guy was trading in. Interesting enough, I tend to enjoy that watch better with that leather hipster strap than the metal band. It's just one of those pieces. Speaking about vintage, the only two watches that I have vintage would be that one and this Submariner right here. This is actually what I call my birthday sub because a guy walked in with this watch and said, hey, you wanna buy this watch? And I said, well, what year it is? When I looked it up, 1982. I feel that I have looked at easily a hundred watches that are older and never will I get a 1982. It's always an 85, an 87 or older, a 79. So when I saw this, I had to have it. Funny story is about four months ago, the guy called me and said, actually texted me, he said, hey, do you want to sell that Submariner that I sold you? I said, no. So contrary to belief, even though I don't wear a lot of two-tone, I do have two two-tone sports models. This particular one right here was another interesting story because I actually um, had this watch years ago and I did a bad deal and I feel like I lost it. Um, I sold it way too cheap. It was just, you know, I was really early into my career and uh, collecting history and I did a bad deal and it took me seven years to replace this watch because they shot up. If you follow these watches, the prices have gone up with the Cerny dial. It took me quite some time to replace it, but I'm happy to have it back and I don't think hopefully I'll ever sell it again. Check out my Yachtmaster two-tone with Tahitian mother of pearl dial. It's a cool looking watch. I mean, I haven't worn this piece in easily Man, it's been a long time since I've worn this watch, but it's a cool watch and I'm not sure what's gonna happen with this if it will be here for the next time that we cover my collection. Uh, maybe I might have to make a move with it and get something else. We already did this entire box. Tahitian Mother of Pearl is the name of the color, Tahitian. Now let's get into more of my gold pieces. This particular watch that I have hidden behind this box is actually pretty interesting watch. Right off the bat when I saw it, you ever heard of love at first sight? That's kind of what happened to me with this watch. And I barely wear it and it's one of those things that I don't see myself gonna wear it often, but I'm weird like that. I buy watches knowing that I'm not gonna wear them. Some of them I just wanna have them. And that's gonna be my GMT Jubilee with factory Surdy dial. When I saw this watch, the condition on it was so perfect that I actually went to my most trusted watchmaker and we looked at it for easily an hour because the condition was so flawless on it, I just didn't understand. I said, maybe it's an aftermarket Jubilee band. You know how that goes. Usually these watches have incredible sag, but this one does not. It's never been polished. I got it at a good deal. At that moment, it was a very, very big stretch for me to buy it at that moment. It just was like, it was brutal. But when I saw it, I just couldn't let it go. I had to have it. So this is my gold Rolex trifecta. That's the way I like to call it. Starting with here, I have my yellow gold sub. Um, I actually did some stupid thing with this watch and just recently I traded what it was a uh, pristine non-ceramic sub and I paid $2,000 just to get this one because it's a Z serial engraved. I mean, some people wouldn't do that. Even when I traded it in to the guy, he told me, he said, your watch is as good as it gets. But this one was unpolished with card and I figured, eh, why not? This one right here is my Day Day 2, which if you guys know me well, you know that this is my go-to watch. I also did a video on how I acquired this dial, and for me, what a touch. Now, this Daytona. This Daytona has a very interesting story. This used to be my father's watch, okay? And 
he ended up deciding he wanted to purchase a boat about two years ago. And he brought me this watch. Wait, actually, before he brought it to me, I found out that he was trying to sell it to a couple of his friends. And when I caught wind of that, I said, what are you doing? And he says, well, you know, I want to sell the, I want to sell the watch so I can put it into the new boat, which at the end of the day, that's what watches are for. You can put money away there. If you need it, you sell them. And I said, you know, how much are they offering you? And when he told me that price, I was like, give me the damn watch. I'm going to sell it for you. I can get you a lot more money. So he gives me the watch and I ended up having the watch for about four days. During that process, I really started to think about it. And I said, I can't sell this watch. What happens is, is that I ended up paying my father the money. He thought that I ended up selling the watch to a wholesaler. And four months later, I walked into Thanksgiving dinner with this watch on my wrist. For me, it was a special watch. I just didn't want to sell it. And um, he was very happy that I was the one that got to keep it. And again, it was a very big stretch, but I did miracles and I made it happen. So before I get into my APs, I want to bring this watch out because I know everyone's going to ask me about it. And it's my Daytona with the ceramic bezel. Great watch. I thoroughly enjoyed this watch. I got it from my uncle. It was such an interesting journey how I ended up acquiring this one as well. And all I got to say is persistence pays. So here are my APs. This particular watch is my 44 millimeter AP Forge Carbon. Great watch, I love it. It's one of the few watches that I'm wearing nowadays that are that size, but since it's black and everything is black, it kind of doesn't make it look so big, you know? The stainless steel version and the rose gold for me on my wrist tend to look a little bit too big, too much emphasis on the case size. This is also the same watch that I broke playing top golf for an hour and a half, and that cost me big time to fix. Next one's gonna be AP 41 millimeter chrono. Funny part about this watch is that um, when I purchased this Daytona, I had said that the only thing that would complete it was if I had one of these. And sometimes, you know, when you put things into the universe and you got to put hard work as well, I mean, you can't, you know, miracles do happen, but when you put something into the universe, the universe responds. And I was at the right position that when this watch appeared, I was able to buy it and keep it. And this is one of the watches that I wear the most out of every watch in this collection. It's going to be this AP41. Last but not least, it's going to be the AP41 Black Dial. This overall is going to be my favorite watch pound for pound. Now, I do regret selling my 5980 Rose Gold. I sold it right before you know, the rise of the prices, which would add insult to injury. I sold it for about $100,000 and four months later they were at 170, but I had a great time with the watch and I turned the profit. But overall, this piece right here is probably my favorite watch out of every single one I have in my collection. If I had to choose two as my favorite, favorite, favorite pieces, okay, it would probably have to be the Day Date with the Ruby and this AP41 Rose Gold Black Dial. And that's my entire collection at the moment. And if I had to give myself a rating in the watch game, I would probably say it's a five. I mean, let's face it, I don't have any heavy hitting Patek Philippe's or any Richard Mills at the moment. Um, I tended to put all my money in the last three, four years, mostly in sports models. Maybe just because they're more collectible with all the different variations and styles within the sports models. And one thing I want to tell you is, I started off with just one watch. It just takes a lot of focus and you gotta be constantly fighting the battle. Any one of you guys out there can start with the watch just like I did and keep adding money and keep snowballing it and keep growing your collection. It doesn't happen overnight. I would say that this easily took me about 13 to 14 years to acquire overall. Yes, I have wiped it out and bought new things, but as a whole, it's taken me that long. And any of you guys can do it. You just gotta work hard and focus on everything and make it happen.
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I got many requests to do this video, but you just don't understand the logistics of this. It's not very easy. I have to get every piece under one roof at that moment to show it to you all. And it's not that easy because a lot of them are locked up in the bank. So feel free to comment below what you think about my watch collection and how you feel about me giving myself a score of five in the watch game. And if you like this video, please like and share. Also, subscribe to my channel.